to call a Power Automate flow from UiPath, it requires a little setup in Power Automate. So go click Create, take an automated cloud flow. Now click Skip, and up here in Search, search for HTTP request. And here you'll pick the when an HTTP request is received. So the intuition is that we send an HTTP request from UiPath, and then we'll process the data in Power Automate, and we will send the result back to UiPath as a response. We will get a URL, and we'll get that after we save, and we will use that URL, UiPath. So here we need a JSON schema. It means that we send data from UiPath into Power Automate, and we will just provide what format that will be in. So um, here I can use sample payload to generate schema. And what I can do here is that uh, I can either paste in what I want the data to be in or simply just write it. Mine will just be a simple key value pair. It doesn't really matter what uh, you type in here. So this will be it. So a key and a value, and then I click done. And here you can see that Power Automate automatically create the schema for us. Then we want to get, we get the data from UiPath. We want to do a little uh, process here in Power Automate. So I'll click new step. I'll find a compose. So I want to take an amount and then I'll add tax to it and I'll send the amount back to UiPath. So very simple, but it's nice for this example. And here I can just say the amount with tax is, and then I'm going to create an expression. Since it comes in a JSON, it is in a string format. So we will convert it um, to a, a float, and then we will add 1.25, which is the Danish tax. It looks like this. So this is just a do an operation here in Power Automate. So here I want to say mole, that will multiply two things, and then I'll get my amount from this one up here. And uh, I'll convert that into a float like this. And the way to do it is to get the trigger body. So here I will say trigger, and then I want to say body. And then I want to say, I want to go down into my key. So we'll need to make sure that the key is named this, what I write now in UiPath. I'll just make a question mark, then a hard brackets, and I want to say amount. But what happens here is that I'm the first multiplant that will be this trigger body, the amount that comes, the, the value from this amount, I'll convert that into a float. Then between these two parentheses, I'll have my second multiplicand, and that will be just be 1.25. And I can click, and it says invalid, but it's fine. This works. Then we'll send the response back to UiPath, very, very simple. And here I will just say new step and I'll have the response back. Pick that one. So here uh, we will have the body. And what I will do here is that I'll simply just um, write this as a JSON as well. This is very convenient when we're going to um, process a large amount of data. So here I'll just say log, and the log equals two, that will be the output from my compose, that is our result or the message. Then I just click Save. Now we will get a URL that we can use over in UiPath. We'll get that up here. So go copy that and move to UiPath. The first thing we'll do is to install a package. So go click All Packages, find the Web API package, install it, click Save, and we now have the HTTP activities which we can use to call the Power Automate flow. So find an HTTP request and drag it in. Before we do anything, uh, we will paste in the endpoint. So control V, that is the endpoint from Power Automate. You can see that this is a key. If people get this key from you, like in this video, if you watch this and try to write it, these, can, these people can actually call my Power Automate flow and make it run over and over. So beware of that. I'll delete this one afterwards. So the request method, that will be post, and I'll click OK. Now uh, I have this HTTP request. It will call the Power Automate flow, but nothing will really happen. We haven't passed any values into it yet. So let's create a value that we can do. And this could vary. I will just make an assign here. We can hard code it in. We could come from an Excel. It could be a for each that do these over and over and have data processed over here. I know it's a simple example, 
but that's the whole purpose of this video. So then I press Ctrl K to create a new variable. I'll call this amount and click enter. Then because it is in string format, you remember we converted it in um, Power Automate, then I'll just say 100. I'll use this 100 down here because we will uh, do a few things. And what I want to do is that I first need to have this body here and that will be in a JSON format. So I will do this and uh, that's because it's a string and a JSON will always have uh, these curly brackets in the start and in the end. And I repeat, this, this JSON is simply just because UiPath wanted as a string. So I'll put these quotation marks around it. Then I can have my key value pair here. And uh, it, you, our intuition, it will look like this amount. And um, since um, if we want to use these quotation marks as a part of the string and not have UiPath treat them as um, a new string, then we will do this to escape them. So now I have the amount and then I could do like a colon and then I can just say um, something like 100 like this. And again, remember to escape your quotation mark. But since we already have a variable for this, we want to use the variable in this JSON string. So what I want to do instead of, I will delete this one here. And then I want to say, um, have a quotation mark that will end this one here, say plus, and then we'll have the amount, which is here. And then we'll have another plus, and I'll have the quotation mark, just one of them, and that will take the rest of the string. So now I have my JSON, and this is how it looks with the variable in. The variable comes from up here. This is nice, so we can change it based on what will happen in our path flow. Then we will have the body format. This is not an XML. This is indeed a J. Finally, we will go down to response content. This is the response that we get back from Power Automate. So I press Control K here to create a new variable for this. Like this, click Enter, and I click OK. Let's try to write it out. So I just pick a right line. Um, control space and take the response count. Now, when we run this, I can run this file. You'll see that our Power Automate flow ran quite quick. And here you can see uh, lock the amount with tax is 125. Of course, we could just have the value in. This was just to make it nice that we can see that Power Automate also could write. Similarly, if I just change this to 157, we can get the taxed amount for that as well run the UI path flow and go to output. And here you can see this is the amount of tax. So we have a connection, we have a connection from UI path to Power Automate and back from Power Automate to UI path. You can also check the runs. We can do those up here. These ones are R2 and we can change, we can check the entire log. YouTube think that this next video will help you as an RPA developer.